Hey, Crystal Maiden here. For part 15 to Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah, this cutscene can't be skipped either. For some reason, they don't let you skip cutscenes that are right before character battles. I don't know why. I haven't tried to skip the cutscene that comes right before the Tails and Eggman character battle. This line right here, people like to say that he's speaking in monotone, but he's trying to sound tough and intimidating, so it makes sense to me. This, this boss fight can be pretty annoying. I, I at least like how the camera's always focused on the boss. It's not like in 06, where you're fighting Silver and you're constantly wandering all over the place, wondering where the boss is. And I like how there's an invisible wall there because it makes it it makes it so that you don't jump out of the arena while you're trying to drill attack into the boss on very narrow platforms. Like because there's only a few positions that the boss can be on those narrow platforms and they're usually right up against the the pillar wall things. Generally it's pretty easy to attack them. It's only when they go back like it's only when they're at the bottom of the arena that they're really annoying to hit because they constantly run away from you, strafing in a circle rather than just running up to you and attacking. And so it's really drawn out. Sometimes this boss can take quite a while. And if you get hit by that attack in either version of the boss fight, your controls get kind of reversed and screwed up. And it's not. It's not a method of controls getting screwed up that you can adjust to. You just, you always start spinning around in circles no matter what. It's not like it reverses your controls or anything. It just screws them up. See what I mean about Rouge's themes fitting this cutscene so much better? She looks directly at the camera. And people think that they only started doing that in Unleashed. Well, sure is a good thing that all those emerald pieces managed to land on the narrow platform instead of falling into the bottomless pit below. How does the Master Emerald not fall and topple over into the lava? What would happen if the Master Emerald fell into lava anyways? I mean, it's needed to neutralize the power of the Chaos Emeralds. If it fell into the lava, what would happen? Would the universe be screwed? Like, would the Master Emerald still exist within the lava? And then the lava would act as the Master Emerald? Can the Master Emerald be destroyed at all? What's Rouge? It's kind of necessary. This is strange. You know? It's showing energy readings from two yep, separate Yep, this emeralds. is how Eggman it actually found out about the fake emerald. fake emerald. He shouldn't have said that there, but... Wait, Shadow. I'm the one who should be telling But yeah, you so... Here, him telling you. Tails that he found now out about the fake emerald because so Tails accidentally told him? That was just him messing with his head. And it, it makes sense that Eggman would be the kind of dick to say to Tails that it was your fault that Sonic died, you know? Huh. Eggman actually wore his goggles for once. And then he promptly puts them back on his head. It's like, why even bother putting on the goggles at all? It's like how Boom version of Tails, Sonic Boom's Tails, has goggles on his head, but he never actually wears them. Although, they would look bad on him if he actually wore them, I guess. Like, I like the goggles that Sonic X Tails wore at one point, where they were all clear and transparent. But anyways, 
this is Cosmic Wall, and this is easily my favorite mech level in the entire franchise. I even like this better than Gamma's levels. Why? Because of how floaty you are with the light gravity that you're going through. I mean, look at this. When you jump, you actually rise up for a little while after you're hovering. I love that. I love the mechanic. This has such great platforming in it. It feels satisfying defeating the enemies because sometimes they make it kind of difficult for you to get to the next platform. Cause like there's artificial chaos hanging on the bottom of the platforms. So okay, you've got to destroy them because otherwise they'll attack you with their arms. And you won't be able to get to the next area. It just my only real complaint about this level is that it lasts for too long. Other than that, I just love how the mech handles here. I just love how floaty your jump is and how high you go and how long it takes for you to fall down. Why can't every mech level in the game be like this? It does such a good job making up for how, how stiff it is and how slow you usually are. It, it just does such a good job making it feel fun. I don't understand why Eggman's egg walker can't always be so floaty. I mean, just because it's low gravity, so what? I mean, we went through Mad Space and Meteor Herd and they didn't have lower gravity. And I guess Eternal Engine and Lost Colony had the same gravity as Earth. I guess they had artificial gravity inducers. Because this place is a lower gravity, but it's, it's in space just like the Ark is. So yeah, this is my favorite level in... This, this is the only mech level that I ever go back to. It's really fun trying to target as many enemies as you can and try to get all the way up to 11 before the stupid laser decides to turn off on you. Although... Getting score is not nearly as satisfying as getting more time. This is an upgrade that's pretty easy to miss if you don't get the idea. Hey, maybe if I press the switch to send that rocket over to that that platform that I can't see because it's being blocked by a platform above it. Maybe I'll get an upgrade and not items or something. <laughs> I completely missed that checkpoint there. It's a good thing I didn't die in this section then. And this is yet another part of a mech level where literally all you're doing is spinning in place while, while targeting a whole bunch of enemies. I think they can hurt you, but it's kind of time wasting, but it is a very good way to rack up score. So I talked earlier about how the dark story does not really have the best gameplay compared to the hero story. Like, a lot of its levels are clones of levels in the hero story that aren't as good. Like, the most glaring example is Egg Quarters compared to Death Chamber. No. Well, I'm not... Death Chamber is definitely worse. And my point is, originally Sonic, Knuckles, and Eggman were the only characters who were going to be playable in this game. Tails, Rouge, and Shadow didn't make a significant appearance in trailers until towards the end of production because they were never meant to be playable in the first place. The only reason that Tails was playable in this game is because of fan outcry. And because the game is so close to being finished, they just stuffed Tails in a mech. Instead of, you know, bringing back his incredibly fun SA1 gameplay style that was the real reason people wanted him back in the first place. That's also why Tails, Rouge, and Shadow are all clone characters. They have the same gameplay styles as previously existing characters because they were never meant to be in the game in the first place. And the levels that originally would have been reached by doing different things in the levels, in the whole branching pathways idea, they eventually became the levels that the clone characters go through. Like, that's why Egg Quarters and Death Chamber are clone levels. They would have just been two alternate versions of one basic stage that you would have been able to go through at the same point in the story. 
Or at least that's how I interpret it, anyways. Shortly before this game's release, there used to be a common rumor of a Sonic & Knuckles RPG, which was ultimately just a theoretical project. But there is still some speculation that it got retooled into this game. I think the only way you can progress here is to hit that switch so that that thing stops rising. Probably on a timeline, too. And another thing about the whole what could have been thing, Shadow was originally going to be called Teriums, which is Greek for reflection of. Presumably with Sonic being who he's the reflection of. This makes sense, because, you know, he's like an evil version of Sonic, sort of. Scourge is a more obvious example of that. Shadow doesn't really have much in common with Sonic, like, at all, other than his abilities. There are some people who know that Terios was originally Shadow's name, but he also had the prototype name of Dark Sonic, which was actually used for him in early promotional material. And you know, I bet if they went with the name Dark Sonic in this plot, the story would have actually explained his similarities to Sonic, as him having a clear connection to him. Like, Sonic and Shadow have a connection in their backstories. But instead, Shadow just inexplicably has all of Sonic's abilities, and we don't know why. Sonic doesn't really have a backstory at all, actually. The closest he has is that he was born on Christmas Island. So I guess you could connect the two by him having a connection to Shadow unknowingly. It is better that he was called Shadow, though. That is a much better name. And Rouge would have been called Nails, which is a contrast to Knuckles. And I I'm glad that they went with Rouge instead. Nails sounds like a pretty bad name, kind of cringeworthy. And I guess people thought that it would have been sexist calling a female character like Rouge nails because women like nails right for some reason even though you can't really see the nails because they're so much tinier than their face the point is rouge is a better name although i guess it could still be kind of interpreted as a sexist because rouge is makeup or something so nah it's, nails is too sexist let's just name her after makeup instead <laughs> and she does wear a lot of makeup but again, even though she looks like a whore, she's really not. She barely ever actually flirts with anyone. Like, her design is... Sh she's a Femi Patel. She's the evil, stereotypical jewel thief. That's the character archetype she is. That's why she looks the way she does. And Shadow was imprisoned by Gun for like 50 whole years. And sure he was in stasis that whole time, he wasn't conscious and aware of it. He probably would have gone insane from boredom if he did. But that's another reason why I can understand why Gun wouldn't just approach Sonic for help with Shadow. Because if Sonic found out that someone was imprisoned for 50 years, he wouldn't be too pleased. Considering how much he loves freedom. I mean, Remember how annoyed he was at the idea of sealing Chaos in the Master Emerald? He'll just be trapped there, forever! So, it makes sense that he wouldn't be too happy with Gun for imprisoning Shadow for 50 years. And Shadow was made as an immortal being, so he can't get sick, ever. So, it makes sense that he was made to get the cure for Maria, because he can't get sick, so I guess Gerald figured that maybe he has the cure to all diseases in his blood somehow. Is there something I can help you with? If you value your life, you will tell me where Sonic and Tails are. Even in the dark story, we see Sonic say this. Which makes me wonder if Eggman is actually able to hear him say that. If Eggman could hear him say that, then he wouldn't have... He would have probably figured out the fake Emerald anyways, because Sonic said that. Remember how much trouble I had with this boss fight in the hero story? It's basically the exact same thing here. I remember how I said that the mech battles are just a war of attrition, it's entirely based on luck who won. 
Well, I beat it in first try in 19 seconds. Remember how much I died the previous time? See what I mean about being based on luck? I'll see you in the next part.